Hi, today we've got a video update for you about the Subaru range of turbo diesel engines. Now in Australia they've only been available since uh, late 2009, that's with the MY10 model. They've been through a new generation engine update. They've now got this engine in the current model Forrester XT, uh, which is a new body shape. They're still available in the Subaru Outback model, which is the car we've got. Of course, uh, here at MRT Performance we've been campaigning a turbo diesel MY10 Subaru Forester rally car in the Australian Rally Championship, which we've now won two years in a row um, in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Series all around Australia. And that has allowed us to do a lot of research and development and show people what's actually capable of being achieved with a turbo diesel Subaru engine, as well as all the other turbo diesels we work on, you know, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Great Wall, for example. And what a lot of people ask us about is, what do you do about the DPF? Um, that is the diesel particulate filter. How do you gain more power? How do you gain more torque? Well, with turbo diesel engines, all, it's all about torque. Our Subaru turbo diesel Forester rally car has gone from about 380 newton meters of torque up to about 430, 450 newton meters. Um, massive increase in torque, small increase in power. Um, we're running 30 psi boost. Uh, with a modified diesel particulate filter. Now, the DPF on these cars um, is a filter on the outbound side of the exhaust system designed to filter out the diesel particulates. That's all the black soot that you see on older model trucks and things like that from an emissions point of view. But more critically, these DPFs are also combined with the catalytic converter. So it's not a simple case of um, removing them and putting in a blanking pipe or smashing them out and then having your car run because it will throw a check engine light fault code and in the case of the turbo diesel engines as opposed to turbo petrol engines when you modify the catalytic converters um, they suffer a lot more badly and then requires some pretty complicated ECU tuning to overcome that uh, fault that is a result of that modification. What I wanted to show you today is we've got this car come in here, the client um, hasn't driven it in the right environment. A lot of people need to understand whether diesel, um, you need to drive it in an environment where the car can put itself in what they call regeneration mode to clean the DPF, to get the soot particles out that it's collected over time. And if the light comes on on the dash, you only got a certain period of time or distance um, to get the car onto a freeway or somewhere like that where it can go into the regen mode, um, typically above about 60 kilometers an hour for about anywhere between 5 to 15 minutes, but consult your Subaru owner's manual to get some more information about that. If the light has started to flash, it doesn't matter how much more you drive it, it is now needed to go back to a workshop that's got the uh, diagnostic tools to uh, solve that fault code, which is on the dash of your car, um, indicating that the DPF needs more um, attention. And in our case, we use uh, the Ecotec tuning tools with the cable to allow us to put it in what we call forced regeneration mode, meaning we force the engine to do a regeneration of the DPF without having to take the car for a drive. Um, if you're thinking about buying a turbo diesel, consider these things carefully. They're a fantastic car, fantastic fuel economy, fantastic torque if you drive it in the right environment. So I'll just get my cameraman to show you this right down the bottom there um, with all the pipes hanging off it um, is the DPF, and I'll just point on the, on the camera, it's that part there, um, and it comes out of the turbo, into the DPF, and then out the exhaust through the catalytic converter. And what I'm going to do is we'll come around the side here, we've got a, um, I'll get Corey to go onto the dash, and you'll see that light there is the flashing DPF light, which is showing that there is something wrong with it. So what we're going to do is start the car up, we've got the handbrake on, um, we're going to connect to the connect to the ECU and, and you'll see when I hit OK um, it'll idle up the engine, it'll run for about 15 minutes and put it through a forced regen mode. And you can hear the engine now running a lot higher. Um, you need to have it in an environment where you can uh, suck out all the exhaust gases, which is why it's facing into our dyno room. So we use the uh, evacuator fan to get rid of all the black soot that's going to come out the exhaust. And in about 10 to 15 minutes, it'll complete the regen mode. And if we've managed to save the DPF and not have to do a $7,000 replacement part, 
this car will be okay to have a minor service and then deliver it back to the customer. I just want to show you one other thing a lot of people don't understand as well. I'll get my cameraman to focus on my laptop. You'll see on the diagnostic tool here, you can do force regen. Might even want to get a bit closer to it. You can do force regen and you can also do um, install a new DPF and you can read the ECDs. But this one here, reset oil ratio. And I wanted to uh, talk to you about that. A lot of people don't understand or workshops don't understand these days with modern turbo diesel engines when you do an oil change you have to tell the ECU that you've done an oil change because over a period of time the ECU does a calculation for time travelled and distance travelled for the uh, diesel impregnation through the crankcase blow-by into the engine oil which dilutes the engine oil because they run such high combustion t uh, pressures the engine oil in a diesel um, effectively gets watered down with diesel and then obviously the engine oil doesn't do its job as well because it's very diluted. It's important that you make sure that when you get an oil change done in your car that that is reset. Otherwise over a period of time you may have mechanically changed the oil in your engine but the ECU doesn't know it and that'll affect the performance and the long-term maintenance of your car. If you want to be able to do that you can actually get a cable from us. We sell the cable separately quite cheaply that you can actually do that yourself or if you're a workshop inquiring about these things we can supply you the cable and some technical support on how to do that as well. So there you have it, Subaru Turbo Diesel DPF. These DPFs are available on a whole heap of other model cars around the world depending on the car you drive being turbo diesel. Uh, understanding more about the fault codes on the dash, if you see that flashing light or the light come on, deal with it straight away. If you need some technical support, give us a call, contact us, we're here to help. And on behalf of MRT Performance and the rest of my team here, I hope this ECU upgrade with some technical support on the turbo diesels for Subaru has helped you. For now, I'm Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.